I'm going to now introduce you to constructors. What's a constructor? A constructor is a very special function for user-defined types used for initializing objects. Later on, you're going to take a look at destructors, which are used for destroying objects. But for now, constructors good enough. When you create an object of any type, a constructor is going to be called. Let's take a look at these lines of code. You declare a float x. In this case, it's not initialized. A constructor is called for that primitive type, and the compiler communicates with the operating system to secure the memory and do all the background work to identify that memory location as being a C++ object, and in this case, giving it an initial value. Here's a different format for doing exactly the same thing. Here, you're passing 7.2 to the constructor, to give that initial value to that flow. Okay, so what happens when you want to declare an object of your user-defined type fraction? Will this line of code compile? The answer is yes, actually. The reason being is that the compiler will create a constructor for you, assuming you don't create one. It's called the default constructor, and it's called automatically. So in this line of code, then, the compiler will call the default constructor, which goes through the steps of securing the memory from the operating system, and you're left with the values that are in that memory location for f. So it has a random numerator and denominator. If you were to output it, there's no telling what might come out. The question then is, can you create an object of type fraction where you specify the values of the member variables, such as this line of code here? Okay, Can I create a fraction I guess not, with a numerator of 4 and a denominator of 5. And the answer is no, you can't because you don't have a constructor that will do that job. Can you create one? Yes, the answer is you can. Let's see how you can. Constructors are very special. There are some special rules that we must learn first. Number one, the name of every constructor is the name of that class. So for our fraction class, the name of the constructors are fraction. Two. Constructors have no return type, and that's not void either, and hence there is no return statement in the body of the constructor. You can overload constructors, and you almost certainly will do so. When you write one constructor, you'll probably write another one. Constructors are called automatically. You don't usually call one explicitly, though you can, but the compiler will look at how an object has been created. It'll look at the arguments passed to it, and then decide which one of the constructors is it going to use, and it'll call the appropriate one. If you write no constructor for your class, then the compiler is going to create the default constructor for you, just like we did with our fraction class. We have no constructor at this point, and so that line of code, fraction f, will compile, because there is a default constructor. But that mechanism is going to be suppressed if you write any constructor whatsoever. Once you write a constructor, then the compiler will no longer give you a default constructor. And that's very important, because you almost certainly will need a default constructor. Not always, but most likely you'll need one. Once you write a constructor, you don't have one anymore, so you have to create it also. So if you write one constructor, most likely you're going to write a default constructor along with it. So let's take a look at the first constructor. For our fraction class, here it is. Of course, its name is fraction. Notice that it has no return type. We're going to pass to it two integers, one for numerator, one for denominator. And here's the code for the definition. Again, no return type. We scope it as a fraction function. Its name is fraction. And we're going to have it set the numerator to num, denominator to den, the two values that are sent in. OK, once again, we don't return anything. No, there's no return type, not an int. It's not void. And we don't have any return statement. Of course, we can declare a float like that, like that, like this. And what about this guy here? Can we do that? Well, no, not anymore we can't. But what about this last guy? Oh, man. We're trying to set the denominator to zero. Well, that's not very wise. And the way we've written our constructor right now, that's going to happen. We passed in a 0, and we're going to assign to the denominator a 0. Well, can we do better than that? Well, of course we can. 
take a look at our second generation constructor. The difference is that I have called my set num and set den functions. So I'm going to let that set den function take care of the possibility of passing in a zero. Let me show you another way to write the definition of a constructor. And this syntax is only good for constructors, not with any other functions. It's called an initialization list. And the syntax is, when you close the parenthesis here on the parameter list, then you're going to put a colon and then a comma delimited list of the member variables. You do not have to initialize all of them, but you should initialize them in order. Furthermore, it, uh, the way you do initialize them is with the parenthesis. In other words, if I were to write m underscore numerator equals num, that would not compile. You can't do that. You cannot use the equals. It has to be with the parenthesis. So I've set numerator to num and denominator to den. And note that you have to have a body to the constructor. Even if it's empty, you have to have a body. This is an initialization list. And the nice thing about it is it's fast. Another way to fix our what if situation is with an initialization list here. I've initialized numerator to num and denominator to den. And then I jump into an if statement and ask the question, is the denominator zero? And if it is, I'm just simply going to bomb out on the program. Is that the best way to do it? No. Best ways to do it are a little bit more advanced than this uh, course. So we won't go over that. Again, that goes back to exception handling. OK, let's take a look then again. We declare our float, declare our float, declare another float. That's fine. How about our fraction? Oh, yeah. No. No good again. Why? Because we created a constructor, one that will take 4 and 5, but now we don't have a default constructor. So let's create a default constructor. Here it is in declaration, simply fraction, open and close parenthesis. Why? Nothing in there. Because it's a default, it takes no arguments. So we'll define it with an initialization list. We'll initialize the numerator to 0 and the denominator to 1. Our fraction is by default 0 over 1 or 0. Now, is there any magic to the numbers that I chose? Oh, absolutely not. You could write your default constructor to create the objects by default any way you want them to. In fact, I could have simply taken all of this out. Imagine not having that. And my constructor would be empty, which would mean that, yes, I have a default constructor, but I'm going to be left with whatever happens to be in the memory locations when they're given to me. That's not the best option, but it would work. What about this last line here, fraction hg? Well, g is a fraction. And so what this says is I'm trying to create a fraction and pass another fraction to it. What I'm trying to do is create a fraction that is a copy of another fraction. This requires what is called a copy constructor, special kind of constructor. Let's take a look at how we write one. Here's this definition. Again, it's still a constructor, so its name is fraction. And you'll see that the parameter list for Every copy constructor will always be the same. It's const, the type that you're copying, reference, this is very important, and then, of course, the name of whatever object it is that you're passing in. So it's a const reference to the same type. Const, because there's no reason to change what you're copying. Fraction, of course, because that's what you are copying. And why reference? Well, suppose you didn't have the reference. Then you've got fraction, const, fraction, and source. If you were to call this constructor, or have it called, what would happen? Well, now this is what? It's called by value, or passed by value, which means the first thing that happens is a copy has to be made of source. So what happens? Sure enough, the copy constructor is called. But when the copy constructor is called, then a copy has to be made of source. Well, if the copy has to be made of source, then the copy constructor has to be called, and so forth and so on. What you have is a infinitely recurring call to the copy constructor. So this won't work. You must have pass by reference. Here's our definition. Again, I can do it as an initialization list because it, still it's a constructor. And I'm simply going to copy into the new numerator 
So I'm referring to the numerator of the created object, that's m underscore numerator, the numerator of the source. Likewise, I'm going to copy the source's denominator into the new denominator of the object that's being created. There's nothing else to be done here. I have nothing in the body of the constructor. One warning before we finish up here, and that is you never want to try to create an object in this fashion. I've got fraction f and then an open and closed set of parentheses. How does the compiler interpret this? If you do type this, then I suspect that what you're thinking is, I want to create a default object. I don't want to pass anything to it. I just want a default object. But the compiler is going to see this as the declaration of a function called f with an empty parameter list that returns a fraction. This will actually compile until you try to use f. It's a function, according to the compiler. You're thinking it is what? A fraction. So if you were to try to, say, have f call its read-in function, what would happen? The compiler would look at this and say, now wait a minute, this is a function trying to call another function that's a member of another class, and that's just absolutely uh, nonsense. And so the compiler would say that it doesn't work. Okay, that's uh, all about constructors. Now you know how to initialize your objects.